Hello everyone and welcome back to Goofy Foot Garage. Continuing on Fiona, the F1. As you can see, I've done a little bit more work to it. I've actually put all the parts back on it and I put the radiator in it. And now what I'm trying to do is build the filler panels for the cowl between the F1 cab and into the, the Explorer firewall. So I'll give you a little rundown of what I did. So I was trying to figure out the gap between the firewall on the F1 and where it would line up with the firewall of the Explorer. Kind of, kind of see it in there a little bit. So that gap I have down to about two and a half inches. The reason it's that short um, is the radiator. So if you see, this is the electric fan that's on the radiator, and that's the pulley for the drive belts. It's about, a, I'd say, I don't know, inch and a half, about two inch clearance on that. So what I had to do is, um, this is the, the radiator core support U that goes all the way around and holds the radiator in place. It's actually backwards. This little brace that you see here used to be up in the front and the radiator used to tilt kind of backwards. Well, it wouldn't fit if I had this uh, flipped around the other way, uh, the radiator tilting backwards, it would be actually hitting that pulley, that, that fan would hit the pulley. Couldn't do it, so I had to give myself some space, flip the, the uh, support around, tip the radiator forward, and actually cut that brace out. You can see it's cut off. That used to go straight across here, but it hits the fan if it's not. So I cut it out, so I'm gonna have to re-weld this brace back in in the round to kind of help hold that core support together. Also helps a little bit keep the front end together. And after I built this frame section right here, like the little stubs that stick out, for some reason, I was off by an inch. So I'm the frame's actually too wide by an inch. So I gotta bring it in half inch on each side. It looks like it fits great here on this side, but on that side, it's too far outside. So uh, the front end actually has to move over a little bit this way. And then, you know, I'm gonna fit it together. So that's what I do there. But that I'm gonna do after I get this stuff all patched in and welded in. So right now what I did is I took some cardboard templates and made some patch panels. I wanted this to be a one solid piece, but I actually had to cut it in half because I'm using this Harbor Freight 3-in-1, the, the roller brake press and uh, shear. And that brake press <laughs> doesn't like metal over 20 gauge. So um, I'm actually, this these panels are 18 gauge. So I wanted a little bit more stiff on the firewall. So this brake press did not like 18 gauge. It was, it was a lot of work, a lot to get it to go. And it's only 30 inches wide versus this gap on the firewall is about 44 inches. So I couldn't really bend those, get the angles that I needed to get it to fit into there. As you can see, there's kind of an angle there to get that in the brake press. I had to cut those in half. So I cut in half and split it down the middle and it got working pretty good. And I made, again, cardboard template to fit in on the side here, patching panel. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to get those patch panels and I wanna get this F1 cab attached to the Explorer firewall, floor pan, stuff like that. So, and I got this panel kind of coming, it's sitting up high because if I drop it down, it'll slide down. So I'm just kind of like, kind of stuck in there. Uh, but once I get these panels in, I will tack weld this one into that one. So uh, once I get this final location, the final bends for making sure it lines up with the, the, the firewall and that little, I have a, a one, one inch square tubing going across there for the firewall on the F1, which makes a good mounting plate. So once I get those located, I'm gonna drill holes all along this flange and drill holes all along that flange and do like little spot welds, little circle welds, uh, rosette welds, I'm not sure exact terminology, but do that to, to help hold it in. Run down to the local auto parts store and buy that seam sealer to, to seal up the seam on the inside and the outside on both of these to help keep it you know watertight and go from there, so. That's where I'm at now. It's the 4th of July weekend, 2022. You know, it's been kind of a off and on summer. And uh, yeah, hopefully end of this weekend, I can get that those panels at least tack welded in, side panel done, other side panel done, and then start filling in the rest of these gaps here. <laughs> and then uh, I'm actually gonna start trying to build like a, a inner fenders to fit so everything will fit in here and again, make it a little bit more watertight so there's not water splash, splashing up from the tire up into the engine bay. So 
that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, everything looks pretty good. The cab is cab's nice and level. Um, I'll give you kind of an overlook of what it looks like. Front end looks good. I got that front tire. It's kind of far back inside the, the wheel well. And then over here, this is going to actually a little bit, you know, could go a little bit farther forward to give me a little bit more room. But uh, right now I have a 11 and a half inch gap from the back of the bed or back of the cap, sorry, to the bed. So that's 11 and a half inches. And I believe I cut off uh, about 11 inches out of the cab. So that was nice for that extended cab I'm doing. And uh, I did play with the bed a little bit. What I'm going to do is these little, uh, I don't know, it's like a three quarter half inch square tubing. I'm going to weld inside the bed to hold the bed in place. Uh, one there and one there. And just put it on top of this to hold so I can take the bed off if I want to and then put it back on top of this. Uh, this is actually uh, the bed of the Explorer. Uh, I'm kind of debating if I want to keep that and then just build filler panels in here and just keep this as the bed for now because what <laughs> stupid me the only reason i really want to do that is those it's got tie down hooks in the bed there's one hide hidden under there but yeah in this little area it's like little tie down hooks there you go that i could use for like tying stuff down in here and kind of not have to worry about the bed i mean i don't i'm not sure if i'm going to keep this as kind of a, a rat rod or if i want to clean it up really nicely do a good paint job body work on it because if that's the case, I'm definitely gonna get rid of this and put a wood bed in here. But if it be, ends up being a rat rod, I really don't care what this bed looks like. It's just gonna be functional. So throw stuff in the back and not worry about damaging or denting or nicking anything. So I uh, got a new front bulkhead on order as well. Cause I, you can see I cut the bottom off. The bottom was just rusted off and there was nothing left of it. So I cut that off. Uh, I was gonna try to see if I can fill in with a, that whole sheet. My, uh, just get an uh you know 18 gauge sheet and just fill that in but i'm like i could find a bulkhead pretty cheap uh online so i'm gonna get just replace that fenders will definitely need some patching up front because it's barely holding on for the rocker or uh, the uh, yeah rock panels no uh anyhow moving on kind of lost my train of thought but yeah this fender i got the i got replacement panels for this one so I can bolt on the running boards. That's the word, running boards. Because there, that bottom of that fender is pretty much rusted out. There's not much place for mounting the bolts for the the running board. And back there, they, I don't really, I haven't really found replacement panels for the front of the back fender. So we have to make those. Again, just you know, do what I can and go from there. The flange that goes around uh, the fender that helps bolt it to the the bed. The holes in those, and then that flange, the hole for the bolts are just, they're about an inch in diameter, which is huge. So I'm not sure if I want to put uh, patch panels in there as well. Just like cut out little quarter size patches and just tack weld them in and then redrill holes or just cut it all off and start a new flange. I'm not sure on that as well. So go from there. And then uh, in the bed, I did take uh, a file and all these little holes that were the, where the studs were because there's the extra studs that are welded that stick out of the bed um, and come through here. That's what the the, fend, the fenders bolt to those studs. And uh, ended up just taking a square file, a small rat tail file, and making the holes kind of square. It's kind of hard to see, but so all the holes are square. So this, the studs that I have are kind of a hard to say, but they're these guys. So they got like kind of a carriage bolt head on it. And then you tack weld them to the bed side so they stay in place. They're not going to go anywhere, but that's kind of what I have. There's your stainless steel screws. I'm not sure what they call them, carriage bolts, because there's no head on it. It's just that, that square part that goes through the side wall. So a bunch of those. Yeah, and then the wheel tubs. <laughs> After I cut them off and put them out, I'm like, probably won't even need the wheel tubs because obviously that's the part I cut out of the bed. And that's where the tire is but these things I, I wouldn't really use much of it now seeing where the bed is there's really not much use for a, a wheel a tub so yeah we'll figure out how that, <laughs> that goes as well all right i've rambled on enough uh, so now i'm just gonna keep fitting those panels up on the on the cowl and uh clean them up sand them off get all that rust and corrosion off them and then uh, put some weld through primer on the back of them and uh, drill some holes and tack weld it to this, this cowl. So 
Wish me luck. We'll catch you guys later.